greets the day, and there's a brighter day coming, soon our heartaches will be gone.
about tomorrow I just live from day to day and hide all borrow from its sunshine for its gas may turn to gray and I don't worry or the future for I know what Jesus said and today beside him for he knows what is ahead many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand oh, but I about tomorrow it may bring me poverty but the one who feeds the sparrow is the one who stands by me That is my portion Maybe through the flame or flood But His presence goes before me And I'm covered with about tomorrow I don't seem to understand oh, but I know who holds tomorrow and I know who holds my I believe the Holy Ghost has something for us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I sure wasn't expecting that, but I'm glad that you did it, and you understand why in just a moment. God knows all about it. Um, he didn't want you to preach. That sounds good, right? <laughs> he does have a plan. Aren't you glad how God orchestrates things? I, I, um, I am a help tonight. If you have your Bibles, uh, go with me in your scripture to Matthew chapter number six. Matthew chapter number six. Dear Lord. And if you would, in your scripture, go down to verse 25. And I'm going to read down to verse 34. And I'm going to bring a little thought tonight. Now, I want to warn you, okay? Uh, I want to warn you a little bit. I'm preaching this message 
that I preached in a series, okay? <laughs> now, I'm not like Brother McBride. Some of you, I can cut mine off more than they can. But uh, I am, okay? This is actually a series, but I'm not going to give you the whole series. Don't let your heart not be troubled. <laughs> But I do want you to know it has been a series, these several verses. It's on my heart tonight. And then when Adley got up and kind of, kind of like God put the thumb on and said, you're doing the right thing. Amen. And uh, I know what I'm preaching on tonight. Uh, I've had to deal with it a little bit. And, uh, you know, sometimes as a preacher, we won't admit some of the mess we're in, you know. We always want to tell everybody else what kind of mess they're in. But we, by the way, we mess up too. Amen. By the way, we have problems too. Yes. And most of the time, it's the same kind of problems you got. Yes. And by the way, our answer is the same answer you got, and that's God's Word. Yes. If you don't mind staying, with, uh, staying for the reading of the Word, I'll start reading it, verse number 25, you'll probably smile the time I get done and say, boy, Adley was on it tonight. I don't know if I'll be on it, but she sure was. The Bible says in verse 25 of Matthew 6, on the Sermon of the Mount, part, a portion of the Sermon on the Mount, therefore I say unto you, and by the way, we'll point out the context of why he said therefore in a moment. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Boy, I like this. Are you not much better than they? Amen. Woo! Woo! Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of them. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast in the oven, shall he not much more clothe ye, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or withal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. Hey, there you go. But, there you go. I love this conjunction, yes. seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Our Father, God, I call on you tonight to just give me liberty. And help me to preach uh, this passage of scripture. Do an exhibition, an exposition that would help folk and strengthen folk. And that the word of God tonight, yes, sir. as it's dissected, will we'll give strength to all of us. Yes, and we'll praise you and honor you in Jesus' name for his sake. Amen. 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 I am going to go ahead and give you the title and then I'll do a little bit of introduction. And because I got so much stuff, I'm going to go ahead and jump into points, okay? Uh, I've got a lot. And ordinarily, I'd spend more time on foundation, but I'll spend some time on it. But I want to preach tonight on this. Dr. Jesus. <laughs> 
I'm glad I got a doctor, Jesus. And his prescription for anxiety. <laughs> and don't you look at me tonight and say you ain't anxious because I, you're a lion. <laughs> hey, we all on the edge. Somebody help me preach. We all having a problem tonight and we've been having a problem ever since this pandemic hit. I want you to know you might go ahead and sit over and say you ain't worried about nothing and you ain't been anxious about nothing. But I want all y'all to know I have. <laughs> and I'm glad that God has given me this portion of scripture in these last seven months just to give me something on my, for my foundation and, and, and for my strength and for my guidance as I guide a church into this uneven world. Thank God we got the Bible that will guide us. Amen. Now let me give you context. He said therefore and you got to know when he was saying, therefore, he's pointing to the verses prior. Without spending a lot of time on this portion of the Sermon on the Mount, the issue at hand actually was that of covetousness. Amen. Or, or our stuff. <laughs> Maybe that's the best way to say it. Because I want you all to know we all like our stuff. Come on now. We all concerned about our stuff. We so concerned about our stuff that we get anxious about our stuff and we start laying up our treasures down here where Jesus said you ought to lay your treasures up in heaven where moth and rust does not corrupt. Amen. And he goes on to say in these verses, and I sure don't have time to get into all this, but by the way, I believe whatever your eye is is how you're going to be directed. And if your eye is on your stuff, what's going to happen, your whole body's going to get darkened. See, I believe a lot of us have a problem tonight because of our worldview and because how we view God and how we view our stuff. Amen. Amen. <laughs> And we're so worried about our stuff. Am I preaching? Don't lie about it. Just go let somebody put a dent on your car. We'll see what kind of spirituality you got. Come on. Just let Dale have somebody mess his Harley up. He'll get all in the flesh. And in these uncertain days, let's be quite honest, we're anxious, we're wondering, uh, is the next generation going to be like it was in the last generation? Is my grandkids going to have what we had? Are they going to have the kind of lifestyle we had? What's it going to be like? And I want you to know something, I don't really know, but I do know, talk to Jesus. Amen. Amen. <sighs> we're so stressed out. Burned out. And brother, you, some of our hair is falling out. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Let me, let me, I'm going somewhere. Please stay with me. Let me define anxiety just a little. Just enough to get us going. It's a feeling of unease. Let me ask you, how many of you lately have felt unease? I'll be quite honest with you. I pastor my church and I do not know what's going to happen any Sunday. I used to count on it. I, I, I mean, I, I used to count on who was going to be there, how many was going to be there, how things were going to I can't count on nothing anymore. I just go in just saying, Hold my breath and say, dear God, just do something. Amen. Yes, because I, we all are battling a feeling of anxiety or unease. And it goes on another little thought. It, it's something that we can't discern and we're uncertain 
of the outcome. Now, ain't nobody in this room knows what the outcome of the election is going to be. And you don't know what the outcome of this pandemic is going to be. And I can give you some real assurance and some real, real, real advice tonight. You better not be looking out. You better start looking up. Amen. 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 Now I'm going to make a statement, and I'm going to end, I'm going to start dealing with these these passages, and I'm going to, I'm going to really get into God's word and preach it straight out. But I want to make a statement before I do. God, hear this. It's so simple. God is not a respecter of people. But what he is a respecter of is principles. It's not who I am. You know, not John Smith that pastors Tage Valley. Uh, not, not Brother Vance that pastors here. No, 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 no. It's not who I am and my position that's going to get me through. It is what I believe and what Jesus is teaching me in the Word of God. So with that in mind, I'm going to just take this passage, dissect it, deal with it, and give you five principles, Dr. Jesus, his prescription for anxiety. You want to lift, you want to be lifted up above it? You want to go into another atmosphere? You're not going to do it with your intellect. You're not going to do it with, with, with uh, how you think. You're just not going to do it. If you start trying to do it that way, you're going to get messed up and, and worry more. Yes, sir. The more I try to figure this mess out, the more this mess messes me up. Yeah. Five things. Five principles. Right here. Right here. Number one. Look at verse 25. And I'm just going down to scripture. I'm going to do my best to do a proper exposition of this scripture. Therefore I say unto you, notice point number one. Take no thought for your life. Boy, that's simplistic. You know what Jesus was saying here? Point number one. If you're going to rise up above anxiety, boy, this, <laughs> you're going to say this is too simple. Number one, you've got to decide not to worry. <laughs> is that not what Jesus said, Brian? That's exactly what he said. He said, take no thought for tomorrow. If you're going to get through this life and go through this period in our life without worry, without fret, you got to end your inner man with the guidance of the Holy Ghost and the Word of God. Decide you're not going to worry. That's what he said. That's not John Smith. Jesus said that. Absolutely. Now, let's, let's, let's deal with that. First of all, you're going to have to acknowledge some facts. With me? Sometimes your job's going to change. Sometimes your health's going to change. Sometimes your family's going to change. But I want you to know something. Let me give you a fact. The Word of God will never change. <laughs> You, 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 you may have changes in your life, but can I say to you tonight, God's word will never change. Amen. Let's, let's go further in the exposition. In verse 25, we need to appropriate some faith. By the way, if you're going to decide not to worry, you're going to have to trust somebody bigger than you. Yes, sir. Look what he said. Therefore, I say unto you. See, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And Jesus therefore said, I say unto you, first of all, the person of your faith. The, our faith need not be based upon what we see, but we need to be, be, have our faith in what we don't see. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ, the one that can take us through. 
Boy, boy, oh boy. Stay with me. And not only the person of our faith, the principles. Therefore I say, Psalm 119, 126, I have esteemed all thy principles to be right. Let me ask you this. Do you believe that? Do you believe God is dealing with you right? And God never makes a mistake. And he didn't make a mistake in allowing this pandemic come. And he, well, whoever's going to be president, if Joe Biden's the one or whoever's going to be president, I want you to know God sets them down and God raises them up and he's not going to make a mistake. And I'm going to take a baby aspirin to that night of election and go to bed knowing that God has everything under control. Absolutely. <laughs> Let me go further. Since I got a lot of material, so I better move. <laughs> Look at the last part uh, of verse 25. Whew, man. It said, take no thought for your life, what you should eat or what you should drink, nor your body, what you should put on. Is not life more than meat and the body more than raiment? Listen carefully what Jesus is saying. Not only do we need to appropriate some faith, but we need to adjust our focus. Yes, sir. Somebody help me preach. We need to situate your awareness. Life is more than what you wear and more than what you eat. I wish, and I wish our church and our churches would get to that point that life's more than what we have. Amen. It's more than our stuff. We dwell on our stuff when life's so much larger than our stuff. Amen. Not only we situate our, your awareness, but you need to solidify your accounting. Poor good preaching reverend. You know where you... I, I got some guys in my church, they got money, I don't. And they've been calling me up and said, please pray for my stocks. <laughs> if you don't know what they are, how can I pray about something I don't even have any clue about? <laughs> pray for the stock market, Hal. <laughs> See, what they're doing, they're putting their marbles in the stock market. And some of them putting their marbles on who the next president is. He is. I say to you, we need to account God is faithful. And we need to put our eggs in his basket. We need to put our life in his hand. Now, hold on. I hope I get past point one. I don't even know what time it is. Am I all right? Then we need to stabilize our attitude. By the way, let me give you this. Your attitude will be good if your accounting is good. What's your attitude, preacher? I need to rely on God. What's your attitude, preacher? I need to remember God. What's your attitude, preacher? I need to rest in God. <laughs> Commit thy way unto the Lord and trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. <laughs> and that's good preaching. <laughs> That'll help you a little bit. Whew. Number two, let me give you a second point. I don't know what, hey, you just tell me when to stop, okay? I'm just gonna preach until, you just tell me when to stop, okay? I mean it. You know, when you're trying to preach a series in one sermon, you better just tell me when to stop. <laughs> Point two. I'm going to try to get all this to you like that I can. So I'll move. Verse 26. Number, number two. Not only do we, boy, this is so simple, but it's right here. Behold, the fowls are there, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns, Yet your heavenly Father feedeth him. Are you not much better than they? Number two, write this down. We need to discern God's works. Whew. See, what G Dr. Jesus is saying, 
is look at my portfolio. Look at my record. Yes, sir. Amen. That's exactly right. Yeah. Amen. Don't look at the pastor's record. Amen. Don't look at the deacon's record. He said, look at my record. Amen. And can I go on record? He's never lost a case. He's never messed up once. Amen. He's high and lifted up. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I guarantee you. I guarantee you, if you get sick in the body, you're going to try to find out the best, find the best doctor in the land. Well, let me just tell you my story. My family doctor is Dr. Kinder. You say, why do you like him so much? Well, he's a member of my church and pays tie there, and that ain't a bad thing. <laughs> Number two, this guy may not know everything, but he knows everybody. And you don't have to know everybody, everything if you know everybody. So here's what I mean by that. So he sent me to the best cardiologist for my heart. Then I got the best cardiologist in the country. But my cardiologist is not an electrophysiologist. And my problem is not actually my arteries, it's my electricity. <laughs> So, some of y'all grab that in a minute. So he took me and sent me to the best electrophysiologist in the state. Amen. And by the way, I wanted the best. Hey, when you, I shouldn't maybe say this, but I'm going to anyway. When your doctor says, don't go to that doctor, you better pay attention to what he said. <laughs> hey man! Yes, now hear me out. Let's look at the exposition. Three things here. First of all, notice his care for creation. Yes, sir. The Bible said, first of all, the fowls are fed. Yeah, exactly. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap. They don't even yes. do nothing. They do nothing. I tell you what they do. <laughs> Eat. Somebody help me preach. See, I believe our creation is by intellectual design. I, I wrote this down. I hope it makes a little sense to you. All of creation works together to keep all of creation working together. <laughs> Look what he said, not only are the fowls fed, the flowers flourish. And by the way, they don't do anything. They don't toil nor spin. <laughs> Somebody help me. Y'all start to get a little of this? <laughs> I'm talking about Dr. Jesus and his care for creation. And then the fields, they, they grow and then they burn. Then they grow and then they burn. And you said, who's in control of that? Dr. Jesus. Amen. Uh, secondly, I'm trying to. Whew. Verse 26, his consideration of his children. I like this, Brother Sam. Amen. I don't want to give you no virus. I don't have one, but I'm going to get it. Amen. I'm going to get up close to you and say, Amen. how much more better are you than them? Yes. Amen. If he feeds the fowls yes. and the flowers flourish and the fields are taken care of and you're his supreme Amen. creation. Amen. Man, I'm about to go, Whoa! much more <laughs> Ooh, good Lord. if he's got the fowls back and he's got the flowers back and he got the fields back how many of you think he's got your back because you were created in his image you're his choice creation and you're his converted creation Man, help me getting some help. 
I'm, I'm cutting this off. I can't help it. I, then his control over creation. Look at verse 27, 20, and 30. Wherefore God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast in the oven. How, how shall I not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? And look at verse 27. Which of you by taking thought or worrying or being anxious can add one cubit unto your statue? You can't add one inch to your stature. Somebody help me preach. Number three. My own, I, I think I'm all right. Look at verse 32. I'll give you a third principle. I really want to get to the fourth one. I'm going to get you the third one. Let me read it to you. For after thee all these things did the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father know that you have need of all these things. So let's see if we got this. This is real deep. Decide not to worry. Discern God's work. Number three. It's big. Distinguish yourself from the world. When you're worrying and when you're fretting and when you're doubting, you're acting just like the world acts. Can't distinguish you from them. Good preaching, Reverend. Can I ask you a question? This is I've been pondering this all evening. Does it does the fact that you're born again matter for anything? <laughs> does the fact that God saved you and you're not your own, you're bought with a pride, does that not matter for anything? <laughs> See, I'm different than the lost man. I, I'm a new creation. Somebody help me preach. I'm more than a conqueror through Christ. <laughs> then let me ask you this. If that's true, why do we act like the world? Why do we gravitate to worldly philosophy? Now, I'm going to say something that's going to get me in trouble. And if I left this off, y'all love this sermon. But I'm going to go ahead and say it anyway. Don't get mad. Some of you I know is going to get mad already. Don't tell me we don't think like a world. Because we're going to prove that Tuesday or you already done it at the ballot box. You'll show your human philosophy. Tell me something. Please tell me this. How can a born again Christian vote for somebody who kills babies? Vote for a socialistic agenda? Vote for, for homosexual rights. And please don't tell me that we don't gravitate to human philosophy because we actually do. Hello. We're so guilty of that. Am I preaching? I don't think anybody left yet. Yet. <laughs> yet. Here's what, the, here's what the heathen think. The heathen thinks everything's fixed by fate. Right, Brian? Fate. You know what else they think? If you got some good stuff and God, you had some things going your way, they just think you got the luck of the draw. But see, I don't think we got the luck of the draw. I think we got a great God, a sovereign God, one that's looking out for us. And then we have heathen pursuits. Right, let me ask you this, this good question. I know I'm slower than I normally am, but I want to pre teach this out, okay? Let me ask you a question. Does your pursuit of life identify you with a saved man or a lost man? Was quiet in here. Ding, ding, wake up. <laughs> Hear me out. I'm going to make a statement. I heard, another, I heard somebody else say it, so I'm quoting somebody else. So if you don't like it, blame it on him. <laughs> How many of you know you say? Are you saved? Okay. You know you say, God. If you're not saved, you need to get saved because you, you ain't got nothing to bank on. Your whole life's a mess. 
You're on your way to hell. You don't have nobody going to take care of your needs. Dear God, help, have mercy on you. But listen to this statement. You raise your hand. We're positionally saved. But a lot of times, we act practically lost. Boy, it's quiet in there. You, you said, would you interpret that for me? I'm going to interpret that for you. Is that we are saved in Christ. Amen. But we act like the heathen. Yes. Yes. That's exactly Am I preaching? Amen. Oh, we're saved. There ain't nothing going to change that. Amen. But practically in our life, we live like the Gentile. Yes, Amen. Oh, I'm trying to. Number four, I'm doing well. Believe it or not, I done cut a lot of bacon off this thing. I'm just going on. Am I preaching the book? Yes, sir. Look at verse 33. Let me give you a fourth principle. I done forgot the other three and you have two, but let's go on. <laughs> decide, decide not to worry. Discern God's works. Distinguish yourself from the world. But listen, this, this is the most important one. We need to be devoted to God's will. Let me show you the verse. Let's go over it. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. Number one, our priority in our Christian life is to seek Jesus first. I tell you what, you get sick, you're going to your doctor. Oh yeah, you are. And you're going to ask him for advice. And that's going to be the first thing you do. I'm going to tell you what, how about your problems? How about your worries? How about your anxiety? Instead of going to some knucklehead that don't know anything, why don't you go to Jesus that knows everything? Yes, Absolutely. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. You know what? Our churches would have revival, Brother Brian, if we would simply just seek him first. Amen. 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 He said, oh, I do that. Oh, is that right? So you pay your tithe like you spoke to. And you pay your faith promise like you're And you're in church every time the door's open. Somebody help me preach. And you're praying. Uh, you're praying all the time. And you're praying without ceasing. And you're reading your Bible. And, and you're connected to the lost people and trying to win them to Christ. Amen. See, so our priority is to seek you first. But here's our passion. Listen carefully. Are y'all there? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and notice this, and his righteousness. Now I want to say it. Our passion, and by the way, let's just tell what righteousness is. I'm going to kind of in this context say it like this. It's doing right. We got imputed righteousness when we got saved, but we have practical righteousness as the Holy Ghost works out of our life through the Word of God. Yes. Amen. You know what? I'm going to be a little transparent. In this time I'm living and I'm preaching and pastoring, these are critical decisions I'm making every day. And I want to be right. How many of y'all think we ought to be right? And being right means we're right with God. Being right means that we're right with the Bible. You can't tell me you're right and you're wrong with the Bible. You can't tell me you're right and, and you don't believe the Bible. You can't tell me you're right and you don't follow the Bible. Amen. Amen. I got a man in my church. He's in heaven now. He loved you. George O'Brien loved you. You know what I called him? Mr. Do Right. That's what he was. Man, I preached a message on doing right. Man, that's all he he lived the rest of his life. Said, do right. Do right. Hey, Dr. Bob Jones Sr. said, do right. Do right. Do right. Yes, sir. I'm going to tell you what our problem is. Our passion is more for our stuff yes, than doing right. 
I remember when I went to Taze Valley. I'll tell this story. And we were getting cold down there. And I'll be honest with you, when I went there, my salary wasn't half. And I was only working for the Department of Highway, so you know what that is at that time. So it went in half. And I told him yes. And there's no, sis, there was no earthly way that my wife and I could live on that salary. No way. None. But you know what I decided to do? Just do right. I was going to follow God. Amen. And I went down there. And I, I, I'm going to tell you, huh? I know preachers tell stories. I'm going to tell the truth. <laughs> I had a man, one of the poorest guys in the church. I was under him, though. <laughs> Every week, that's back in 1978, he'd slip a $10 bill on my hand. Paid for my gas. Every week he brought a bag of groceries to me. Whew. And by the way, he did right. He followed God. By the way, you, you need to do right when everybody else is doing wrong. See, I will tell you, I, I don't beat this stuff. Some preachers are stronger than this on me. I, and I'm probably sure not the strongest guy in this area. But I'm going to say it anyway. We almost lost our standards. Boy, it's a quiet in here. Have I killed this thing or something? We've about lost our standards. Our passion to do right. How I many folks dress like, man, there ain't no consequences. They, their language is like there's no consequences. See, we need to be right in our desire. We need to be right in our dress. We need to be right in our doctrine. We just had to have a passion to do right. Yes, right. You know what? I haven't left this King James Bible. You know why? Because I'm going to do right. I, there's a lot of independent preachers right now. They done left it. Yes, sir. There's some guys I used to have in my church I can't have no more because they are anti-me, anti-church, anti-everybody, and I'm now anti-them. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. So I, I know that sounded a little malicious. Maybe I should have said so strong. Now listen carefully. Y'all getting some of this? Priority seek you first. Passion and his righteousness. Listen to this. Y'all, how many got a Bible? Raise your hand if you got a Bible. Is it right there? Is it, are you in the right page? Let's read verse 33 together. Will you? Read it together. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Now notice. What's going to be added? My clothes, my food, my necessities. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. If I seek him first and I, I, I want his righteousness, everything I need is going to be supplied. Amen. And you know what's been great for me? I get called. I don't think I'm an important preacher, but I do get called a lot. I bet I had 30 calls this week, and they're all the same calls. We're seven months in this pandemic. And I probably had 25 pastors call me and said, you know, the attendance is not the same, but you know what? The offerings are still great. Yeah. Yeah. And, if, and, and they're almost better. You know what God just done for us? He, he paid our building off during the pandemic. You know, hold a minute. I'm talking about $1.5 million in 22 months. And we're not a rich church. And then, you know that tour bus we have, it broke, it dead. Not all the way, but most of the way. And the boys were able to pay cash and replace it. 
And we were able to add one more staff person. You said, why is God so good to you? Not because I'm good. No, I'm just seeking him first. No, my passion is to please him. Somebody help me pray. Now I'm done. I had to get up to the end. Verse 34, I'm finished. Have I kind of, have I dealt with the Bible? Verse 34, take therefore no thought for, you, for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Lastly, and I'm done. We just need to decide to do it the right way. Amen. Reject the anxiety about the future. Yes, sir. Right. Amen. By the way, it is iniquity to worry. Amen. Yes, and by the way, you have an inability to change anything. Amen. And you're, you have no capacity to control anything. Amen. Yes, sir. And last couple thoughts. Rest in the assurance of this fact. I don't know who's going to be the president, but I know who still sits in the throne. Amen. And I know who is still faithful. Yes, and then lastly, in the last phrase, retain your awareness in the fight. Sufficient unto the day. Here's what it really means. Don't worry about next week. Take care of today. And here's what I mean by that. If you're lost, you better take care of it and come yes, and get sir. saved. If you're here in a Christian, now, I'm going to deal with you. And I want you to be honest with me. I wonder how many Christians, will you bow your head? I'm going to pray. How many right now have caught yourself worrying and being anxious? And you know that doesn't please God. Slip up your hand. God bless you. Oh, yeah. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to stand. And I know we fret about tomorrow. But if you sit your hand up or you need some help tonight, will you take these five principles that I preach to you and come around this altar and pray. Stand with me.